Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. Greetings and welcome to the PLSQL channel, a series of video trainings in the Oracle PLSQL language. My name is Stephen Feuerstein, and I'm a PLSQL developer just like you. This lesson is part of my series on writing dynamic SQL inside the PLSQL language, and the topic of this lesson is executing queries dynamically with Method 3 Dynamic SQL. What I'm going to be talking about now is Method 3 Dynamic SQL. When I'm executing a query dynamically, and it has a fixed number of elements in the select list. In other words, at the time I compile my code, I know the number of expressions that will be on the select list of the query. I might have selecting last name and salary. I might be selecting all the elements in my all the columns in my row, in my table, but I know the number at the time of compilation. So I can basically say execute immediate my string, and I can fe fetch into just like select into. I can execute immediate into my list of variables, and I can also use the using clause to specify one or more bind variables. If you do not know the number of elements at the time you're writing your code, in other words, I don't know if I'm selecting 2 or 5 or 25, I won't know until the user requests execution of my code. Then you're talking about a method for dynamic SQL implementation. It's much more complex, and you will need to use DBMS SQL. But if you know the number of elements that you're selecting, then you can query a single row or multiple rows of data pretty easily with execute immediate and the open for clause that I'll show you soon, basically using the into clause to retrieve the data back into a set of PLSQL variables. And those variables could be individual lists of variables like salary, comma, name, comma, ID. It could be a record structure. It could even be fetching into a collection, populating multiple rows of data. So what we'll do is take a look at individual row querying and then multi-row query. So retrieving a single row dynamically. It's the simplest form of method 3. Your query identifies a single row of data. The into clause of execute immediate directs the expressions from the select list into the list of variables or as I've mentioned you can even fetch into a record. Let's take a look at a number of examples. First of all my tab count program. Let's close all this stuff down. So tab count. Rather than writing select count star over and over again, I've decided to write a single function called table count that takes the name of the owner of the table, the name of the table, and an optional where clause, and it returns the number of rows in the table. So inside my program, I say execute immediate. I construct my select statement, select count star, and you know that will always return one row at most, and in fact always one row, from owner.table, and then I'll add the where clause. If the where clause is not null, then I'll put in where and the where clause, otherwise nothing. I grab the value back through the into clause and then return it. Now there's a lot of other stuff inside this program I won't be talking about until I talk about best practices for dynamic SQL and specifically avoiding the danger of SQL injection. So that's what all of this stuff is about. So we won't get into that right now. The main thing is execute immediate, construct your select statement, the into clause has to have a matching number of elements in it for the number of elements selected in the list in the, in the query. And then I can return in this case just that one value. So I'm going to compile this program, and then I'll run it to get the total number of rows in the employees table, the total number of rows in department ID 50, and the total number of rows in the department's table. Run my code, and here's my output. 107 employees, 45 in department 50, 27 departments in my company. So a single row query, in this case always retrieving that one row, and I return the value, a single value being returned. Let's take a look at next key. Now with next key, what I'm going to show you here is how you can hide the retrieval of the next value from a sequence. Oftentimes, at least prior to 11, Oracle 11, if I need to get the value from the sequence, I would write select begin 
select oh my gosh it's hard to type isn't it select dyn sequence next val into my next key from usually sys.dual so this would be the traditional and very much non-optimal way to do this so let's let's just finish it up here The problem with this code is I'm exposing how I'm getting my sequence with my select from dual, which is a pretty kludgy operation. And of course, I have to write this over and over again. So what I could do is create a single program called next key, pass in the name of the sequence. I create the select statement on the fly, get the next value from dual, fetch it into my single value and return it. And in Oracle 11.2, I can even do a direct assignment. So in 11.2, I no longer have to do a select from dual. I could do something like this. The next key is assign the value of dyn sequence dot next val. And I can do that dynamically as well. This is an example, by the way, of dynamic PLSQL. But in any case, all these variations will work. And if you're not on Oracle 11 yet, you certainly can't take advantage of this syntax. You'd have to write your select from dual and instead of doing that, you could hide the implementation and simply say, get me the next key for that sequence. I run this code. And I see that it gets me all the values for the sequence. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In other words, it used up 1 right here. Then it got 2 and 3. It used up 4 here. And then it got 5 and 6. So again, single row dynamic query, in this case, simply hiding the underlying mechanics of how I get my next value for my sequence. And then let's look at the other examples, method three example script. So first of all, what I'm going to do is fetch multiple columns from the employees table two columns for a given primary key, and I'm going to drop them into my local variables. And I'm not sure why I did this, but notice I've got a record structure here. So if I want to, I can say record.field and individual variable. It doesn't matter as long as the data type of this thing is compatible with the data type of the element being selected. Let's try that. Run my code. And I see that styles is the last name for employee ID 138. So it retrieved that one row for me, populated my variables, and then I can work with the data. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to bind in my value. So just to make sure you know, even, even though I'm doing selects, I can also bind values in with the using clause. So rather than hard coding 138, I'm going to provide a placeholder, colon, and then the name of the placeholder. And then I have to match up that placeholder with a value in my using clause. And I run this and get exactly the same result. So you can use both into clause. Into clause is required for selects. The using clause is optional, but is often used as well. Let's take a look at fetching into an entire record. So I don't have to fetch individual values or fetch into individual values. I can say I'm going to declare a record based on the table percent row type. Give me all the columns from that table for this primary key. And it gets me that information. No problem. Now, you cannot bind in a record structure. I can't use a record to bind into a dynamic SQL statement, but because it's not an SQL type, this is not an SQL data type, anything in the using list has to be compatible with SQL. So you can't bind in a record structure, but Oracle's more than happy to fetch multiple elements into a record structure as long as the number of elements in their type in the select list match the number of fields and their data type in the record, which makes it a lot easier to fetch multiple columns of data from an underlying table or even a join of multiple tables. OK, so that's fetching a single row, pretty straightforward. Fetching multiple rows dynamically, this is also supported with dynamic SQL. And you have two options. If you need to retrieve more than one row of data, you can use either cursor variables and the open for statement, or execute immediate with bulk collect into. Now, bulk collect is the bulk processing mechanism for retrieving ro multiple rows very quickly in PLSQL. If you're not familiar with bulk collect and the collections that you have to use with them, check out my separate lesson series on turbocharging SQL performance in PLSQL and also the series on collections. Generally, execute immediate is the preferred method because it's simpler to write, understand, and maintain. 
But if you are retrieving a large number of rows of data, you'll probably want to use Open4 because with that approach, you can limit the number of rows you'll be fetching with each retrieval. Let's take a look. So in my first example, let's pull it out, clear out my output. I'm going to declare a nested table of employee records. So every element in this collection looks just like a row in the employees table. And then with a single execute immediate statement, I can say construct my select statement. Obviously, this is not a dynamic select statement, so we're assuming there's something about it that is dynamic if you're really using this feature. I can't just say into my collection because I'm retrieving multiple rows. And in fact, if I try to say just into, Oracle says, no way. Expression L employees is of the wrong type. So if I use an into, then the elements that are here have to represent a single row of data, a record, or a list of variables. If I'm fetching multiple rows of data, which is certainly what is happening here, then I need to say bulk collect into. In fact, here, let's do this one more time. Let's get rid of the bulk collect. Let's have just one record. And let's look at another kind of error that you get. If I have a single record right here, and I try to fetch into that one record, let's see what happens then. Oracle says, look, I tried to get multiple rows, but you said you wanted a single row. Select into, or execute immediate into, is an exact fetch, one row. And this returns more than the number of rows. So you'll get that kind of mismatch. Instead, what you want to do is employees and bulk collect into. So now I'm saying whatever number of rows that you get, take them and bulk collect them into my list of employees, and then show me the number of rows that I've modified. I run my code, and I see that there are 107 rows. By the way, see the number of rows that I modified. That's not true. I, I misspoke. See the number of rows that I've queried, the number of rows in my collection. So if I want to fetch multiple rows of data, I certainly can do that with execute immediate, but I need to use bulk collect. If I use bulk collect, I have to specify a collection as the recipient of my data. Now let's take a look at doing the same thing with a cursor variable. A cursor variable is a variable that points to a result set of rows and columns, and I can declare a cursor variable of type sysref cursor, which is a weak ref cursor type, and that's the kind you have to use when you're using dynamic SQL. So I declare my cursor variable. I again declare a collection that looks just like my employees table. I open my cursor variable for the select statement. This is the special syntax for cursor variables open for. Then I can say fetch bulk collect into. So in a single fetch statement with bulk collect, I can retrieve all the rows into my collection and see the count. Run my code. And there's my 107 again. So this is pretty much equivalent to, to doing an execute immediate. I get all the rows with one fetch. In this case, I open and then get all the rows with one fetch in a separate step. But the result is the same. Retrieve all the rows identified by my query. So that works OK. But if you have a very large collection, I'm sorry, a very large number of rows that I'm selecting, I could consume an enormous amount of memory in the PGA or process global area for this collection. That could cause problems in my application. And if these concepts of PGA, memory allocation for collections, bulk collect are not familiar to you, you do need to watch the separate videos on these topics. But that's the problem. This is very simple code to write, as is this, but it could be impractical for a production application because I'd be retrieving too much data at once. So likely the preferred approach to take in a production environment would use the open for along with a limit. Let's take a look. So I'm going to declare my cursor variable, declare my collection that looks just like my table. I'll open my cursor variable for that select statement. But instead of doing a single fetch bulk collect, I'll start up a loop. I'll fetch the next 100 rows or 1,000 rows or whatever my limit clause specifies. I'll stop when there's nothing in my collection. And then I'll process the contents of my collection. By using the limit clause, I can limit the amount of memory that I need to allocate for each iteration. And as you can see, I can use the fetch bulk collect into with my cursor variable. Notice that none of this code involves dynamic SQL. All the dynamic elements of my code are buried right inside the open for statement. And when I run this code, 
I see 100 and then 7. So I retrieved 100 rows the first time, then 7 rows the second time. So if you need to fetch multiple rows from a dynamic SQL statement, and you could have lots and lots of rows that you're fetching, certainly in the range of thousands and above, if you've got less than 100 rows being fetched, chances are this approach will be just fine, as well the simplest approach of all, the execute immediate. Drawing some conclusions. Execute immediate makes it really quite easy to fetch a single row or multiple rows of data from a dynamically constructed query much, much easier than using DBMS SQL, for example. The into clause accepts the rows and columns of data coming out of your select statement. You can use the using clause to bind variables into the statement and avoiding concatenation or hard coding of values.